Hi everyone, we continue to explore Angular Rotor Guards and we already covered pretty much all of them except the last one which is called Resolver and we're going to do it right now. My name is Mitro Mrzenski, you're watching Decoded Frontend channel, the channel where you can find advanced Angular tutorials, so subscribe right now and let's get started! Okay, let's get started with an example. For this tutorial I prepared a very simple application. So on the uh, root uh, road, I just rendered the user list, yeah? And it is very simple. This is just a, a component which injects some user service and this user service has gets user, which calls this endpoint, this JSON placeholder, which return, returns me some dummy users, yeah? And here is... Uh, I'm just waiting until this user will be resolved and then within the ng4 loop I render this list. And every list you can see it has uh, the link which called details, so this is this one. And if I click on any of these I can see the user details. Yeah. So everything quite uh, fine with this uh, and you can see this uh, pattern which might be very familiar to you. This is by the way how I imp implemented this with ng-if uh, and until data is being resolved I show this template which, which is just a span with the loading. So pretty sure you all know this so there is nothing surprising. And this pattern is okay, and for this particular case it's absolutely fine, but imagine that your user detail can consist from many widgets, like not only details, but you load the widget with his latest post, with his latest comments and something else, I don't know, and then you get um, uh, the situation when you get a lot of loaders or this loading placeholders and then data for this widget starts to be resolved at the different point of time and you UI just you know jumping and it can irritate. And another disadvantage with this approach is that if we try to access the user which doesn't exist we will see anyway this page rendered but once uh, we get 404 errors, so not found, we are being redirected, which is uh, also not the best user experience, yeah? why we even show this page if user doesn't exist. So the third problem with this is that it might be that some nested components uh, for this role depend on the user data which come from the server, not the data which not depends on the ID which you can easily read here, but on some data which will be arrived later on. And everything is boils down to one simple thing. It would be great to have the user data or data at all uh, prefetched. So means before we enter some certain uh, road, the data should be already resolved. And basically this is what Resolver does. And let's jump to the code and implement it. So I'm going to use uh, an xconsole extension for VS Code, which allows me generate components, you know, directives, everything, and also resolvers. So I will generate one. I will call it user and I will render it under the apps or sorry source app and then user. So I click run and you can see that they were created the resolver for me. Let's so far remove the spec file and have a look what is inside. And inside you can see that this is just a service which is injected into the uh, root injector in our Angular application and uh, it has, uh, it implements the resolve interface and this interface uh, forces it to have the resolve method which returns some data. And so far it's a boolean but we uh, change it and we say that we want to return the user and 
user. This is interface I prepared before. It's uh, just a interface with three fields, ID, name, and email. And we have to return the, uh, this user. So uh, what we're going to do here, uh, first of all, I'm going to inject uh, unnecessary services. So inside the constructor, so it will be two services, users and a router. And uh, let's start to implement the resolve method. So I'm going to uh, use users and namely get user method, which basically takes the argument ID of the user and uh, it also calls this JSON placeholder placeholder service with some certain ID and returns me data for this dummy user. And user ID I will read from params, so I will read the, this one. And how I can do this, I will use the road for it and there will be params field and there will be ID and it might be optional. So let's leave it as, as it is. Um, then we have to process uh, this data somehow. Yeah, we have to handle also the error. And I would suggest you to take it from, uh, from here, from our user component. So uh, I will uh, copy catch error. This is how I want to handle my error, right? So I will do uh, redirect to the home page and return the empty uh, observable. Besides this, let's also take this delay and we just emulate some, you know, uh, network latency. Here we go. So let's remove unused uh, imports and uh, different, you know, arguments. Save it, and now we have to somehow provide uh, this user resolver. And this is how we can do it. We copy this, then we go to our app routing model, and I apply it to the router where I want to resolve it. So this is our user ID route, yeah? And I say that, please resolve. Then the value should be an object, and we should uh, give it some my uh, key. I will call it user. So this is the key which will which will be using to fetch resolved data from our router. Okay, and then we have to just provide our user resolver. As easy as that. Now I can save it, and before we start to check, let's adjust also the user component because uh, now we. Uh, pull uh, user data from service, from uh, remote server, but now we want to refactor it and read this data from, uh, from our activated road. And this is how you can do it. So let's uh, remove all this stuff. Also here. And this time I will read data from my activated road. And activated road has such a property called data. And this is the observable. So we can um, fetch uh, data from it. I will use the map operator. And here I will get the data for the road. And from the data, I will return um, this user key, which we defined uh, right there, this one, okay? So that's it, basically. Uh, I will save it and uh, we can remove this everything. And now we can go and check how it works. So I will navigate to the users and Let's try to click details. I click and now we see that this user was rendered immediately without this loading things and uh, everything like that. 
but still we have some disadvantage yeah if you might notice we have some delay namely four seconds before we see the user which is also not quite good user experience so we would uh, like to give users some maybe feedback right and in order to do this uh, we will use some rotor events this is that would be the uh, bonus thing for this video we'll do some introduction to uh, rotor events and uh, we have to create a loader and the loader I would suggest you to create using a material progress bar so I'm going to import it nice and then let's go to the template and i'm going to render it somewhere here above so here is my uh, progress bar and then we have to first of all inject the rotor in order to listen for events additionally i want to introduce uh, some properties so first one is loading, which is going to be observable of boolean and a couple of private one. Uh, so first one will be the show loader events. This is the stream which will be uh, emits values when we have to show uh, this loader and we will do pretty much similar but for um, hide loader events right and okay we have to define them like this and then we implement on init lifecycle hook and here we will say that okay we have to define this um, show loader events so we will say that okay uh, from router listen for events and then we need to filter out all events except events which is instance of resolve start so once we emit resolve start we should say that um, it should return true like this yeah oops so and the similar thing we have to do for hide loader for this one so i'll replace it here but instead of start we will say that we have to listen for resolve end and map it to false and then already for is loading we will merge these two streams so in is loading stream we will have uh, either true or false yeah so will be height and will be show so like this and the idea is that once uh, router starts to uh, resolve some data we say that yeah show the uh, uh, spinner and if it's already resolved it's end then we should hide it uh, so that's fine we just have to add some ng if uh, here and say that it should be visible is loading uh, true so like this oh, we didn't import this okay let's check it if it works so i reload the page i click the details and you can see until we're loading we see the uh, uh, progress bar and once we loaded everything it disappeared and we have nice user experience and here's just few final words uh, and this is that you can use multiple resolvers right if you need to resolve something else beside the user you can attach multiple ones so you can you know do something like something like this yeah and you are not restricted you can resolve as many as you need 
And uh, the second thing is that child roads will not get this data. So if you have child road and you want to get access to this resolve, you have to use uh, dot this dot road dot parent and then already subscribe, then you get access to uh, data resolved by this router. And um, also keep in mind that uh, this resolve will be executed every time when you enter this road. So I think I forgot nothing. If I forgot something, please uh, mention this in the comments. All right, guys, we are done and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if so, please share it with your friends and colleagues. And also don't forget that I have a couple of video courses about Envelope Material Theming and GraphQL engine called Hasura, which allows you to turn your relational database into real-time and performant GraphQL endpoints within literally hours. This is super cool. Please check this out. And also I'm waiting for your feedback in the comment sections and I wish you a productive week ahead, stay safe and see you in the future.